Hi, Cat's Cradle here. This is going to be a video on canning cheese. I have watched many different people who live self-sufficient lifestyles who might even consider themselves preppers uh, canning cheese and I have had some concerns and have held my tongue and of course uh, very seldom leave any kind of comments on anybody's video uh, especially those that might be perceived as being negative but I um, I just can't stand it anymore and I have to I have to make this video this is uh, not saying that this is absolutely the right way to do it but I have studied it out in my mind and have uh, thought about these procedures long and hard in order to be able to make the safest product for my family and I believe that uh, or my hope is that I will give you the very best information I can so that you can can cheese safely for your family. I do begin a little differently than most people do. First of all, let me say that I can my cheese in half pint jars. I would never can them in jars bigger than that because there is some concern about density of, of this cheese and I want uh, to be able to get the cheese in the small jars very hot. Um, and just, just keep the, the size small. Uh, this is kind of unconventional, but this is how I start because realize that the people who pack the cheese to ship, uh, the bag boy that, or, or the stock boy that unboxed it to put it on the shelf, the checker, uh, and you, maybe other members of your family have touched this cheese, and uh, there's all kind of germs and bacteria on the outside of the package. And so the packages are sealed, and I have no concern about water getting in there. If it does, then, uh, you know, just grate it and use it instead of canning it. But I wash all my packages with warm, soapy water and rinse them off and let them drain. After they've drained a while, then I come back with a very clean, brand new dishcloth and dry them off. You have to kind of lift up that little place in the back where the package is sealed in order to get the water out of there. And then I take them to my clean cutting board and I cut my cheese cubes and blocks and you can see about how big they are. These half pint canning jars have been warming in the oven at about 200 degrees. I never heat them any hotter than that in the oven because technically they're not made for uh, being heated with dry heat. But $200, 200 degrees is not going to impact them uh, significantly. I then put them, I'm just doing a very small batch here for demonstration purposes for you. I take a pan that will allow me to pour water in so that it comes about halfway up the sides of the jars. I am using uh, gloves here, food service, food grade, uh, health grade gloves to put the cheese into the jars. These, jo these gloves are smalls. That's Prepper A's size. Uh, she's, a, she's a young woman and they fit her hands well. I'm out of the size I use, which is larger, extra large, so I have cut the wrist on these gloves in order to uh, keep them from being so uncomfortable. And I'm placing the cheese cubes in the jar. Now the cubes at the bottom are warm and are getting soft even right now, so I'm able to push that cheese down every few minutes. It softens enough where I can push the cheese down. An 8 ounce block of cheese will perfectly fit in one of these jars minus about one of these cubes which is not an issue for us because we usually just eat a couple of cubes and then the rest of it will fit fit perfectly in the jars. You just keep pushing them in and mashing them down. A few cubes will be left and I'll save those as I uh, show you how, uh oh, one little cube went for a swim. Just fish it out if that happens to you. We'll eat that or give that to the dogs. So a few of these cubes will be left, uh oh, another one took a swim. A few cubes will be left and we will uh, fill the, refill the jars uh, as the cheese melts and sinks down into the jar. Yes, you are seeing right, that is cream cheese. I'm going to can two jars of cream cheese for you. I just cut the blocks up in long strips and then begin mashing them down in a jar. You will hear other people say that you can't can cream cheese. That is not true. Now let me uh, give you this little disclaimer. Uh, the National Food, uh, Center for Home Food Pres Preservation says that they have not done any test to determine if it is safe to can cheese at home. 
Now I need to ask you, how long have we been canning home canning in jars in our homes? For years and years and years, many, uh, many decades. Do you think by now they could have found time to do a test on to determine if canning cheese or canning butter at home is safe? Uh, I think they probably could have. And my premise is that they don't do that because the food, uh, the dairy lobby is so powerful and they don't want them to do that. They don't want you to buy uh, these products on sale. They don't want you to stockpile them. They want you to go to the store and buy them fresh weekly. And I think that's how come tests have never been performed. I have determined in my own mind that for my family, I feel confident that I can can it safely. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. So I'm just dividing this. Uh, oh, and an 8 ounce block of cream cheese will fit perfectly in those jars as well. So I'm going to leave just a little bit out, let it melt down, and then I'll put the rest in. You can see the ch uh, cheddar cheese continues to soften. This is sharp cheddar cheese. I do not recommend canning that. One, because the cheese, uh, the nature of the cheese is that it has less moisture in it and it's a little bit more crumbly, and so it's harder to get it to melt. I really recommend you just canning mild cheddar cheese. It seems to work so much better. So then, uh, just don't, don't mind the uh, empty jars in the back. They're for another project. I just have them heating in the oven. The oven's on 200 degrees, and I just put, uh, put the cheese in there to soften. I do not use a wooden uh, implement to mash down my cheese. I also do not any, use anything like a spatula like this. How in the world could I be sure that it, that's clean in there? I've seen people use both of these on videos. I would not recommend that. I use a little plastic knife-like tool that comes with the uh, canning set, the ball canning set, to mash down my cheese. This is not nearly melted enough, so I'm not going to mess with this for very long. Yeah, it's still it's still pretty firm, but I'm going to check every jar. Yeah, I'm just going to wait for this to soften a little more so that I can show you how I push it down. So I'm just going to close uh, close the oven, being very careful not to slosh that water around. I don't want any water to get in those jars, and I'm going to let it go a few more minutes. Now you can see I'm holding this in front of the oven door, and that's because I am actually sitting in a chair in front of the oven because I want to keep a very, very close eye on this. So I'm just sitting there reading uh, in between times that I'm testing the cheese. And it makes it very easy for me just to sit there and peek in. Now this cheese is softening enough that I can push it down. So I'm going to gather up a few blocks of uh, the remaining cheese I have left. You can see I'm just sticking the little knife in them and, and putting them in the jar. My camera person will show you that in just one second here. And that's probably enough for that jar. See, I'm adding the cheese at the top. It's melting at the bottom and uh, being pushed down. So I'm going to let it go a few more minutes. Okay, the cream cheese is just about ready. And what I want to do is push that cheese down and fill in those gaps down there. It's really pretty soft at this point. The jar is very hot. I'm getting it into those voids so that there's cream cheese uh, in every little space in that jar. I'm going to get a little bit more off this cutting board, the last little piece, and put in there. And we will consider that full for that jar. I'm just mashing it down, trying to pack it in there. I'll worry about cleaning off the rim of that jar in a, in a minute when uh, the cheddar cheese has been softened. I'll bring them all out and get them ready to put the lids and bands on. Okay, the cream cheese is done. I'm wiping the rim. You will notice with a clean paper towel or napkin, I would never grab a wet dish rag out of my sink. I would never grab a dish towel to wipe it. I pick a new paper towel or a new napkin uh, to do that with to just ensure I'm not transferring any bacteria whatsoever to the rim of that jar. So on go the hot lids and the hot rings and I won't wait. I'll go ahead and put those into my big pot here. This is actually my pressure canner 
but I'm not using it as a pressure canner today. I'm using it as a boiling water bath. So I get the cream cheese right in and now it's time to go on to the cheddar cheese. This cheese has completely melted now. You can see how soft it is on the top. You'll also notice there's a lot of oil that comes out of the cheese. Do not be tempted to drain that off. You want that to stay in your cheese. That's what gives it the nice texture when you bite into it. Uh, after you get through canning, the oil will all completely come to the surface of that jar. Don't worry about it. As it cools, it will be reabsorbed and redistributed in that cheese just like it's supposed to be. I just push down, again filling in any gaps. I send the cheese that's at the top to the bottom of the jar and it will roll the cheese that's at the bottom to the top. It looks like there's still voids left in that cheese but those voids are filled with the oil so it's perfectly packed in there. I drop that lid so I'm returning it to the boiling water or the simmering water actually that's in that bowl to be reheated because I want to be sure I didn't pick up any bacteria off my stove even though my stove was thoroughly clean before I started. And here you go, here's the third one. It's all just completely melted. That's exactly like you want it. The jars are very hot. I'm going to wipe the rim of this last one, being sure to get all the oil off. You can see how I turned that napkin over and wiped again. Let's go get that final lid and the last ring and screw it on. And now the cheddar cheese is going into the steaming pot. You can see the steam rising out of that. I keep it just below a boil until I get the pot completely loaded. There's a rack in the bottom of this pot so the jars are not sitting directly on the pot bottom. That would, might cause them to crack. Now I'm adding more water because I want the water to cover the top of the jars. So you can see there's about one to two inches above top of the jars. The water is very hot. Here's some water that's coming from my boiling water kettle. The other water came from the pot that I had the jars heating in in the oven. It was plenty hot. Okay, that looks good. They're completely covered. So now I'm going to get the lid to the canner and put it on. Now I have let them uh, simmer the 20 minutes. I'm going to set this lid just slightly askew to let most of the steam escape. Again, I did not use this as a pressure canner. I used it as a boiling water bath. So there was no looking at the gauge, no putting of the valve on or anything. I just used this like a pot with a lid. The steam is escaping. I open my microwave which is above my stove and that's where I set the lid for the pressure canner just to keep it out of my way and off the counter. I lift up so I'm not dragging that pot against my ceramic top stove and I, I pull it off the heating element. You can see it's still bubbling just a little bit. Uh, there's a little glistening on the water. Yes, sometimes a little bit of oil escapes from the jars. Don't worry about that. And I'm going to let them sit for about five minutes before I remove them to a towel lined counter. You want the towel because you don't want to set the hot jars on the cold counter and run the risk of them cracking. The cheese looks just beautiful. Here comes one of the cream cheese. Sometimes these little half pints have a tendency to want to tip over if you get too much water in the pot. So I don't like to have the water level, level much more than about an inch or two inches above the lid on these. So there they go. They're all out of the counter and I am going to let them sit for 24 hours before I touch them. Now they have cooled and watch the lid pop off of this one. Wow. Hold it on that good. So you just run a plastic knife around the edge of the jar. I never use metal in my jars. I don't want to etch them. Uh, or slightly scratch them, so I'm just going to run this around. The cheese is very firm now. Well, cutie. Okay, 
And now I'm just going to kind of cut into it. I'll cut a little cone of cheese out and uh, plop it on the plate for you. <laughs> I've got a pork pie. Okay. Look at it. Weird. I want to give Preparay a test, a taste test. She's a good tester for me. Okay, Preparay, I want you to taste. She hasn't tasted no. this, uh -huh. sure. this sharp cheddar before. It's not bad. Get closer to the camera. It's not bad. It's a little different. I mean, it has a good cheesy flavor. The, the texture's kind of weird, but... A good, a good cheesy flavor. I mean, you, you, I would definitely eat it if I had to. And so, yeah, it's slightly, it's slightly different. And I mean, here, try, try a tiny little piece without the a cracker. It's, uh, it's not really rubbery. It, mm -hmm. it just changes it a little. It just changes texture slightly. It's still good. I mean, it still tastes really like cheddar cheese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still good. Very good. Good. I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's do cream cheese. This child loves cream cheese. Good seal. Okay. I'm excited for this canning cheese thing. That's that's great. Especially for cheese lovers. Mm. Smells good. That's mm. good too. I don't think this changed texture at all. No, the cream cheese. The cream cheese is lovely. Really good. And it really, you know, it's it's still very creamy. And you can, looks good. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. Cream cheese, regular cheese. And the good thing is, this can go right back in the jar for storage. <laughs> with the lid on, what's wrong with the lid on, and good to go. You may have watched some videos on YouTube where the presenter is processing cheese in a pressure canner. I just don't believe it's necessary. The process used in order to make cheese is that you have to add some kind of acid to it, whether it's uh, rennet or whether it's uh, vinegar. Uh, you have to add acid to it. That's what causes the cheese to break up into curds. With that said, uh, I would consider cheese an acid food and so I just don't believe that pressure canning it is necessary. I've had no trouble processing it for 30 minutes in a bo boiling water bath. Uh, it seems perfectly shelf stable to me and uh, very viable doing it that way. The cream cheese is usable right out of the jar. It just it acts exactly like cream cheese. The cheddar cheese is solid, just like it is when you buy it in a block at the grocery store. You can grate it, you can melt it, uh, you can make cheese toast, you can, you can do whatever. And I just love the idea of having cheese on my shelf. I hope you do too, and I hope that you'll try it uh, using your own discretion and determining whether it's safe for your family. Until next time, this is Cat's Cradle.